Hi viewers, this is Sri Ramalu. So today's topic is crystallography by Levy method. Okay. So what is the Levy method? Let me explain. The experimental arrangement of Levy method is shown in figure. See, it is the experimental arrangement of Levy method. The crystal is held stationary in the beam of x-ray so there is one crystal this is a crystal so it is placed in the path of x-rays after passing through the crystals x-rays are means what are what passing x-rays are passing so here x-rays after passing means x-rays only x-rays after passing through the crystal x-rays are diffracted and are recorded on the photographic plate see this is a photographic plate so this plate this plate is shown again here okay so on this plate uh, these uh, diffraction patterns are re recorded the x-rays before passing through the crystals are limited to a fine pencil beam by a slit system here there are the two slits are there it is a s1 leaded s1 and it is s2 slits and these slits are lead lead diaphragms so they can allow a small beam like a pencil the x-rays which penetrate the crystals are scattered from different atomic diffraction centers so this contains a many number of atoms it contains a many number of atoms and each atoms can act as a one diffraction center okay that means when x-rays are falling on the atom then they start a diffracting so that is why atoms are called diffracting centers or diffraction centers these this is a possible when there is a whole range of wavelengths in the continuous spectrum okay so continuous spectrum so this is a spectrum forming continuously and there will be discrete value of lambda discrete value of lambda means like this n lambda so this like this are called discrete means 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 lambda are called discrete values discrete values of lambda which satisfy the Bragg's conditions so that must satisfy Bragg condition means it must obey 2d sin theta is equals to n lambda here no matter whatever may be the orientation of lattice planes here uh, no need to speak about the whether the, they are oriented in this direction like this or in this manner or in this manner whatever direction of um, lattice planes are there that is not matter okay see the complete diagram once again okay from x ray x rays are coming from the source and falling on the diaphragms and it can make a fine pencil beam to fall on the crystals so crystal when they falls on the crystals they penetrate into the crystals and they starts diffracting in different directions like this so this point can make like these dots and dots this central can make the central spot okay we know that atoms of crystal have an orderly arrangement in all these dimension in space yes orderly arrangement means the gap between two uh, lattice point is must be same so this side or this side or any side the gap must be same that is called orderly arrangement hence the diffraction of excess will occur from many families of atomic planes many families here it is a uh, like this say uh, atoms are, are uh, lattice points are arranged like this so it is one plane it is another plane so it is one family it is like this one family or the planes may be also in this manner so this it is one family like this The diffraction pattern consists of central spot, a set of spots arranged in a definite pattern about a central spot. 
so diffraction pattern consists of a central spot pin central dot or sp black spot around it uh, arranged definite pattern means at a particular point uh, the dots are or spots are arranged okay so see the diagram once again so it is a central spot central this is central spot and see these are the arranged at a particular exactly at a particular points at a exactly the gap this gap this gap and this gap are always same okay the symmetrical pattern of spot is known as levy pattern so that pattern what do you call that pattern is called levy pattern each spot each spot in the levy pattern corresponding to an interference maximum okay so that is because of interference maximum for a set of uh, crystal plane satisfying the bragg equation 2d sin theta is 2a sin theta a is the distance between the two atoms 2a sin theta is equals to n lambda okay so when the plane obey this one then only they can form the interference maxima for a particular wavelength selected from the incident beam okay only particular for it is it happens for only one wavelength only so that is why here n lambda lambda is written not lambda 1 lambda 2 is not written only one wavelength is valid here imagine a line grating with atoms on the line as a diffraction center so here imagine one line grating grating line grating means uh, like this see so these are all the arranged on a single line so like this are uh, is considered one line grating it is one lattice point another lattice point lattice point lattice point and the gap between them is always uh, fixed that is uh, a let a be the lattice constants lattice constant means what constant distance between the two successive lattice points successive means uh, side by side so the gap between these two is a and the gap between these two is also a but not uh, this is an a is not in between these two things so successive means side by side it is not a side to this one suppose monochromatic x rays monochromatic means single wavelength x ray of a wavelength lambda or incident on the space lattice okay space why we have to say space lattice uh, lattice points are arranged in space so that is why that is called a space lattice the electrons in the atoms at the lattice points are scatter x-ray in all direction coherently so generally lag x-rays are coming towards the uh, lattice points or atoms and they start scattering x-rays are high energetic uh, electrons and atoms also contains electrons so these two electrons starts repelling then they move in this direction let t coherently means uh, co their uh, phase difference is same that is a uh, coherently let theta not be the angle of incidence and theta be the angle of diffraction as shown in figure theta not is what angle of incidence incidence angle so see theta not is incidence angle and theta is diffracting angle okay so this theta and this theta is same and this and this are same the path of difference between the two diffracted ray is en minus b here see one point is said what is that uh, see once again imagine a line grating with atoms on the line or a line as a diffraction center so imagining line grating means this is a line grating see atoms are arranged in this manner okay now the path of difference between the two rays see here one ray is falling on a atom another one is falling on b atom then this can diffract like this and it can diffract in this manner okay so from a atom and from b atom now what we have to do see if you draw a normal from a to on this x ray uh, this x ray and uh, from b atom to on this x ray so one is an incident another one is on diffracted then what it gives you know here to here distance is same and here to here this distance is same but this extra distance and it is extra distance but this distance is more than this distance so that is why 
this distance minus this distance gives to us path of difference so that is why an minus bm is written and if it is for maximum instantaneity for maxima n lambda we have to write so why here n1 lambda is written only one direction is taken generally three dimensions present so in x direction n1 y direction n2 z direction n3 so i will explain later if i calculate for this then i will write similarly for them okay <clears throat> and let it is a equation 1 from figure right angle triangle a and b so if you want to calculate an and a bm first consider an on a and b on right angle triangle and next to b m a another right angle triangle so from a and b right angle triangle a and b see it is one right angle triangle okay so and seen bigger view and so uh, what we need we need an value and later we want bn value so first an an is see it is theta here 90 degrees is there and uh, a to b is a uh, hypotenuse why because it is opposite to the 90 degree so if you want theta an is uh, adjacent to the theta so that is a cos theta is taken cos theta is equals to adjacent by hypotenuse adjacent by hypotenuse so adjacent is what an so that is why it's hypotenuse is ab ab is written but a to b distance a to b is what it is a, a atom to b atom or a lattice point to b lattice point distance is how much that is a lattice constant so that is in the place of uh, a b what is written a is written and bring this a this side then a n can be written as a cos theta okay so like this a n is calculated next what we have to calculate b m we have to calculate b m okay why a n c a n is calculated next b m is calculated we have to calculate for this another right angle triangle we have to choose that is b m a b m a so this right angle triangle we have to choose and from this right angle triangle ab is here also hypotenuse and here theta not not theta here it is a theta not is given okay so that is the cos theta not is adjacent by hypotenuse why again cos theta is taken we need bm value bm value is adjacent to the theta not so that is why cos theta is written from this cos theta is equals to what adjacent by hypotenuse adjacent is a bm okay hypotenuse is ab ab and ab value again what ab value is a so substitute here a value then cos theta not is equals to bm by a and from this uh, bring a this side bm is equals to a cos theta not so what we got we got an value and a bm value substitute them in the equation 1 what is the equation 1 an minus bm is equals to n1 lambda so an value is uh, a cos theta a cos theta and a bm value is what a cos theta not okay substitute them a cos theta a cos theta not is equal to n lambda take out common a factor and it is a equation 2 let cos theta not is alpha not and cos theta is a alpha so these are called direction cosine alpha not and alpha direction cosine along one dimension or along one direction or along x direction x axis now substitute then what you get a into it is what alpha i is alpha not okay so n1 lambda above equation is called a levy equation that is in one dimension for three dimensions levy equations are simply so for along x axis alpha along y axis beta along z axis gamma now substitute them and uh, integers n1 along x axis n1 y n2 z n3 so like this we can write alpha minus alpha not beta minus beta not gamma minus gamma not so these equations are called levy equations okay friends thank you don't forget watching it this video till the end